to be in pairs, let's say, and I ask them for them to tell two nice things about each other. They discover, oh, I like things that they have in, uh, that they can they have in common. For instance, oh, I like game that actually they can see you, that they don't see the Carolina or Timia, the lecture, but can see you first as a person. Uh, students come to the class and, and, and get more than simply the slides which they could be at home. Welcome to the Academic Room, where inspiring educators share practical tips on engaging students. Please subscribe to the channel under this video if you'd like to be notified about future content. But today, I'm very, very happy to welcome the wonderful Dr. Carolina Rodolfi in the room. Hello, Carolina, and million thanks for accepting my invitation. Oh, hello, Timia. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm so excited to share practices and share my history with people with enthusiasm about it, teaching and learning as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So actually, we worked together with Carolina for years. I learned a lot from her, and this is why she's on the show. Currently, she is a, a senior lecturer at Oxford Brookes University, but you can read more about her in the description under this video. So the first topic I'd like to talk about, Carolina, is uh, the student rep the report with the students and uh, this relationship. Uh, we always had amazing feedback uh, about you from students. They always loved you and they also respected you. They really wanted to do the tasks, you know, the, the best. Uh, and that's my question. Do you have some techniques establishing this report from the beginning uh, when you first meet the students and then later on at the sessions? Yes, that is a good question. Uh, and that comes to my research as well, because one of the topics that I enjoy so much researching is about social relationships so for you to bond with someone and create this kind of relationship is so important for students first of all for their for their engagement and for them to actually learn something because when they look at you there let's say in front of the class and if they don't have some kind of um emotion they just think that you're there just uh showing what is the material, what are the topics, and that's it. So I think that creating bonds with the students is extremely important for them to really see what the content is about. So that is why I remember one of the, the, um, the student feedback that I received is about caring, being lo uh, uh, loving with uh, with them, I guess that for you just should be there with them because sometimes they struggle and just for you to be there and say that you understand then I think that is uh, the most important uh, rule or tip as being a lecturer. Yeah, I really love the words emotion and caring because really even if they are students and adults in our case, um, we are teaching masters or even if it's undergraduate, they are adults. But do you have some techniques uh, from the, uh, the first lectures that you do? What do you tell them? Uh, do you have some um, practical tips as well? Yeah, I have like a kind of game. Let's say that is a game because let's say first week of, of class, they don't know each other. And I have this game that I ask them, first of all, for the pairs, let's say. And I ask them for them to tell two nice things about each other. They discover, oh, I like things that they have in, uh, that they can they have in common. For instance, oh, I like music or I like traveling. And then I ask each student to tell about the other. Mm -hmm. And when they are presenting their colleague to me, uh, uh, another one thing that I like for instance, if the students say, oh, I like traveling. I say, well, travel where? Oh, I like. I love Italy and I can say, oh, I love Italy as well. Which kind of, have you ever traveled there? So I think these are, you know, a uh, silly game that actually they can see you, that, that they don't see the Carolina or Timia, the lecture, but can see you first as a person. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. That's a very nice kickoff. Um, and in terms of the material delivering the lecture and the seminars, I've, I've been teaching your the materials modules that you created. They are always so engaging themselves. But how do you make that students come to the class and, and, and get more than simply the slides which they could 
agree that how do you deliver sometimes your your sessions are two or three hours long so how do you keep them engaged how do you introduce a new material what are your tips for that oh man first of all thank you so much for uh, for sharing uh, uh, your opinion about the materials the one thing that i cannot teach if the material is not mine if it's not me that produced so it happened to me in the past let's say that you have the material that was another lecture that had developed but it's not me there the first thing so if i don't engage with the material first how can i make sure that a student will engage with the material will engage with me and with all the materials provided so usually I'd say, let's say if I'm not, if it's not me that produced the, the material, I have a look and I put myself in, in the student's place and say, the thing that someone around their twenties will understand that this, for instance, oh, they, if you're talking about marketing mix, this is something about the business, but it's the first time that they're hearing about this. So how can I make this more approachable to them? Another thing that I, for me, doesn't work is, is slides with, uh, black and white background. I just panic because it's not fun at all. So I needed to change to make it different colors. I like to use GIFs. I like to use memes. I like to use um, different uh, designs. And sometimes I just put a picture there, let's say an image of something of, let's say a, 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 an image of a water, a bottle of water. And I just talk about the product and using the, the images as an example. So this helps me uh, as a part, you know, as you were acting, I feel like as I was acting and I needed to create this kind of connection with the students. So first of all, with the material and then with them. So uh, you needed to make the design of the slides funny, interest and avoid this black and white and even if it's not your own material, make it yours. Otherwise, you're just repeating what is on the on the material that your colleague created. Mm, no, these are wonderful tips. I'm just taking some notes here. And in terms of, I know that you're very big on engaging the students and engaging them in group activities. Many of your activities uh, relate to that at seminars. And you also uh, had modules where there was actually a group assessment. Uh, how do you make sure that everyone is involved in a group activity, that it's not just uh, two or three students uh, leading the game and the rest is not doing anything? What are your tips for that? I think that the first thing is for you to create the rules of the activity. And one thing that I enjoy doing it is actually uh, assigning roles for each uh, for each group. So there is one activity or one assignment that you will, will be the leader. But others, your role is just, uh, let's say, that you're the one uh, doing the data analysis and bringing the data to, to the students to discuss. So making sure that everyone has a role, it will create a, an atmosphere for them to see that they are part of what they are doing. It. So I guess this is the first uh, rule that you needed to create to make sure that everyone is part of the, of the activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you have any other rules for students in for group activities or for anything else? Uh, the other thing I would say, I, I like to make it sure that activities are fun. I'll give you an example. I put it for the, uh, in the past when I was teaching luxury, there's one class that called luxury retailing. And I, uh, I adore doing this activity that I call the retail safari. Mm -hmm. So making sure that they are participating. I, I take all the students in London, go to Bond Street region, and with like say a checklist of what they needed to see it. And I'm presenting, for instance, what are what are the features of a window of a, a store window in a luxury store or in a flagship store. So they are part of that. They are all engaging. Then they producing this report in class. So. All of them are part of it. They are all understanding, for instance, how the business atmosphere, in this case, how the luxury retailing works and make it sure that they are part of it. If I see that some of them are not engaging, then is the time for you to start pay attention and see it, oh, maybe this person here is not actually engaged. So trying to understand, start making questions and saying it, 
oh, uh, what do you think about this? Or for instance, uh, what have you seen in this window here that you thought that was uh, that was nice? How can you uh, uh, apply this? So you also needed to pay attention to the student's gestures for you to see if in some case they're not participating or they're not finding so um, attractive the, the activity. Mm, that's really fascinating. That must have been amazing to have this, you know, this this really experimental learning. That's what you know yes, is right. about so 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 many times. Uh, in terms of um, dealing with difficult situations, um, have you had some experience distracting students when somebody is always on the phone, or distracting with distracting the other students from paying attention? Do you have some tips on what to do then? That is a hard topic because uh, I will not lie and say that this never happened because it ha happened often. So the first thing, let's say there is a process, right? My first process is first week of class, housekeeping, say it. Okay, it's fine to use the phones for specific activities, which I enjoy using the phone because you see it, as I say, I'm getting older and the students are getting younger each year. And you know that they were born and the mobile phones were there. So how can I make them use the mobile phone for something useful in class? But we have the housekeeping. I create this housekeeping in terms, let's say in terms of um, student coming late to class. I have a rule. You email me first, telling me that you're going to get, um, you're not going to arrive on time because of this and this and that. I will read it, okay? But I always tell the student to a wait for the break time to come, because what happens? Let's say we're here talking, and just somebody comes knock on my door and start making noises, and you start pay attention to what your the lecture was actually talking about. So always come to class if you're. If you arrive late, come during the break time. And in terms of disruption, inside the class, students are talking. It depends if it's a small or a larger group, but always when I spot one, I start getting uh, getting closer to the student. Let's say if it's a small, uh, if it's a small group, usually they stop, they realize and say, yeah, she's watching me. But if it's a large group, let's say 200 students, I usually like to spot them and ask them for them to share something about the class. So this will make them, let's say, turn their uh, their key and say, okay, she's pay attention. She's pay attention to me. So these are some um, things that I do to avoid disruption. <laughs> yeah, very good tips. Thank you very much. Let's talk a bit about um, assessments. Um, formative and summative feedback. I know that you, knowing you, your practice learning from you, that when you give formative assessment, you don't like to tell students what to do. You want them to explore uh, themselves. So how do you give feedback in a way that is not telling them what to do, but still helping them in the preparation of their assessment and to be more successful when you actually mark it? So it's going to be you marking it. Yeah, one thing that I call the Socratic method and this just asking questions, for instance, uh, let's say that something's not wrong. Let's say that the, the students say that uh, the P uh, instead of the four P's product place uh, promotion, uh, they just say another word and say, do you actually, do you think which of these four options, which one that, that you think that is incorrect? So he already noticed that something's not right, but I will not just tell, oh, this P here is wrong. I always tell them, where do you think if something, what does it make sense? They already know the answer. They they did activities before, but as you said, instead of telling them this is wrong, no, I use the Socratic method of asking questions. If the student still didn't realize, they say, okay, but don't you think that this part here, and then the students start to uh, remember what we have discussed. So the, the Socratic method and this conversation that comes with the beginning of our conversation here, the bones for you to see that with a simple conversation, the student can make the change instead of me telling, oh, you answered wrong, 
let's say the section one or or this paragraph yeah no this is a very good tip because also in real life i mean we won't have always somebody telling us what to do and they should really learn it so i really like this tip uh, thank you very much for this um, in terms of, you mentioned that sometimes you ask them to use the phone and you really try to make it fun and exciting for them. So do you have some tools that you use during the, the classes to keep them engaged? Yeah, one that I like uh, using it, there is a website called Whoop Club that they use. It's different from Mentimeter. I like it as well, but I, I prefer the Whoop Club because you can create like a kind of gamification, like they are running a competition and you can see students uh, going and you can actually see the one that's going to the first place, second place, third place. So they actually feel like a video game, you know, at, that, okay, oh, we're competing. Great. Yeah. Like Kahoot, is it similar to that? Yeah, and I've, I noticed that they really enjoy the, the gamification, which is something that I'm trying to apply for each module, trying to see a way to use gamification more often because they are learning by doing it, but also having fun. Yeah. So their phones they, or their tablet or their laptop, they use it instead of doing other things. And, and what was the name again of the platform? Wood? Uh, whoop Clap. Okay. Yeah, I will I will check it and link it below. And can you share an example of an actual game or an actual um, uh, thing that you ask them to do there? Um, if it's a large class, let's say it also depends of of the size of the class. But let's say there is a two hundred uh, students in class. So usually uh, quizzes I enjoy, especially during the no sorry during the lecture for me just to check if they're actually go uh, understanding what I'm saying it. So short questions and uh, I use it. It depends if it's the seminar which. I can give more, let's say, in deep games. Something that I really enjoy and is for it. I would I would not use these uh, online tools, but I like for them to to create groups, and one let's say will defend an idea, the other the opposite, or what I like to do for them to continue activity from the other colleague, for they can let's say mark not mark but to assess if the questions are correct or not so in this way is another way to create this kind of uh of engagement so these are things but what uh one thing that i would like to mention is that i started teaching in 2010 in that time yeah we had internet but it's not something like today so sometimes this old style still works nowadays especially because we're so we're online all the time and we needed some time to, you know, to concentrate on the offline world. So these old tools like these ones for the students to engage with themselves with, with no device uh, is helpful as well. So mix of everything, I think that is the perfect formula. Yeah, I agree with you. And it also helps them with when they want to have a job and they have to work there. They they will have to interact with others there, right? And work yeah. in teams. Which leads me to the next topic, which is a very fashionable one, but you already mentioned some great examples, which is employability. And obviously, marketing is a very um, practitioner topic anyway. You mentioned the trip to Bond Street, which is fascinating. Um, do you add any other elements or what kind of aspects you think of when you really want to help employability of the students when designing or delivering the sessions? I think that is important for the lecture, it depends in which degree that you're teaching. I'll, I'll give an example that I used to teach and, ma and manage the, the luxury program. I still nowadays receive, uh, uh, let's say, employment offers, different levels, not, not because I'm going to apply, because I would like to see it, what they're asking mm -hmm. to, this new, to, to the employees. So every time, I first of all, I, I start saying to the students, oh, there is this luxury opportunity, for instance, for this, for you to try to, to apply. And another thing that I, th that I strongly believe that is for you to understand, you're there in class, I'm teaching these hard skills, but how can I apply these soft skills in, in the subject that, you're, that you're, you're teaching? For instance, the students are there, doing a group work, but how you manage time, which is important for the time, for instance, for assessments, 
you need that for, for you to write on your cover letter. So I remember that every time in class I said to the students, check all the possibilities that the university is giving you, but what the word is giving to you and think about how can I use this in my cover letter? Remember to tell the students, oh, it's the fa London Fashion Week, go there. It's an experience that you're having. You're going to talk to people. Uh, we went for one year and a half. I went with the students in a luxury store in the MCM in there in, near Bond Street. And, and we were just talking with the brand manager. And you know what happened later? He asked us, uh, he invited us for an event. We went, I went there with the students, which was really fun. And then someone there invite the students to go to another event, the other, because it was opening a luxury pop-up store. So you see it, you're there, you're in the middle of the field. And another thing that I strongly believe is apply for uh, jobs with startups. Because even if you don't know then say, set up your LinkedIn profile, find these people. Let's say, I want you to do ghosting. I want you to see what you're doing it. Uh, I want just to follow, not show, uh, ghosting, sorry, shadowing. I just want to see it, what you're doing, I want you to learn. So these are things that you can tell the students and try to apply the soft skills in the in the assessments and during the in during the module as well. That's brilliant. And I know that the luxury brand management you were the program leader of, the students really got very good uh, job offers and actually job uh, positions uh, very soon some of them during the, the the university, the master's program. So it really works very well. Thank you for sharing. And finally, final question, I could listen to you forever, but uh, one question I'd like to still ask you is, I know that you believe in research-led teaching and you always uh, embed your research into teaching and, and use it uh, to, to make it really recent. So what are the topics you are researching right now? What are you working on? Well, uh, I really enjoy, for instance, right now I'm I'm building this module that we run in September that calls the digital consumer behavior. And I'm exploring something new to marketing because there is a lot of research in ethnography. And you know that my, uh, my background is in anthropology. And there's another uh, research method called autoethnography. Let me say it. I'm going to merge these two things. I saw that there are three researchers in, in marketing that using auto netnography. Say, I'm going to ask the students to do an auto netnography uh, for their assignments. First of all, it's something that I'm learning as well, which I find that is exciting. I'm discovering with them. And also for them to realize how these marketing tools, these digital online tools work so they can have one experience when they, again, the employability. When they're finished their degree, I say, yeah, I have an idea of small, how to design and how to analyze small data as well, which is extremely important to understand how things work or the trends, because you cannot measure this using big data. So, for luxury, for instance, I say that I always have my research ideas in class. The one that I had that about the the possessions, yeah, I uh, comes, yeah, comes from discussion with the students, and then I can apply to them. I res uh, we created a research group in the past to discuss the papers and for the students to start applying their uh their knowledge. So research is all about. So luxury is my passion. I love it. Um, trying to apply, even if it's not the subject itself that I'm teaching, but I always uh, apply luxury examples, things that I have done. And my other topic is to discuss and explore social relationships. So I'm always bringing something, uh, which for the digital consumer behavior, I'm also in one class I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to share with them. So yeah, a lecture without any knowledge in research, I think that is losing a little bit of time because you're showing what you have done. You're showing that you have uh, knowledge and you are up to date and you know what's happening in the world right now. So that's why I love research and encourage everyone in any lecture to apply their research in class. That's brilliant. And this is really a great loop that students have a question, you research it, you build it back into the uh, 
to the lectures. And I remember once you presented at the teaching and learning conference, a case where you included a student or more students into a research. So you're very big on that, that you always give them an opportunity as well and do it together with them, right? And it's really fascinating, I really love that. Yeah, it was nice and just to see it, the student, uh, we publish a chapter in a book, which is something amazing. It's a, the, this is something again for the student to put there in a cover letter. How can you transfer? You see that the how can you transfer your skills? Say I have knowledge in luxury, so you can go to a luxury brand and say, yeah, I know something about this sector. I research it about it. So it's always engaging, and I always encourage also students. If students are listening to this, get in touch with your lecturer, see what they're researching. Just say to them, I would like to research with you. It happened with me when I was an undergraduate student. That's why I love so much. I started. Uh, my research uh, uh, process when I was an undergraduate student. So hmm. no, do that's, it. That's it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's fascinating because research is not just done for the purpose of being you know, published, but it's really used. And that is really fascinating here. And you give but, answers to the brands. Hmm? You just give answers to the brands. Say, I know what's happening there. I know how to solve your problem which is fascinating. And you know the skills, how to solve the problems of, of the brands. This is, I always say to students, everyone will receive their degree, but how can you make the difference? And they, I say, I always say to them, data is everything. Without data, you don't know. So learn, how can you learn data? Researching. So I think it's a loop. It's a Job, loop. data, research. Oh, that, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Carolina. Every word you said is gold. I've taken a lot of notes and really this session was really amazing. I'm really happy and looking forward for everybody to watch it. And I'm looking forward to reading your research coming up. So thank you so much for being here, Carolina. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Uh, and thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for watching the Academic Room where inspiring educators like Carolina share best practices and practical tips on how to engage students and how to make it a better future through education. Please subscribe to the channel to be notified about future content and bye for now. Mm -hmm.